Well, I'm not even starting the show with an intro. I'm just going to talk about how bad this team's playing. I'll let John give you the stats quick while I find a way to figure out how about word this. So Okay. Um, anyways, the Kings outshot the Predators 35-32. Face-offs, the Predators were better at 62% versus the Kings 38%. Power plays, the Kings went 1 for 8 while the Predators went 0 for 5. Penalty minutes, the Kings had 12, the Predators at 18. Hits, um, the Predators out hit the Kings 31 to 20. They out blocked the Kings 17 to 12, and they had eight giveaways versus the Kings five. All right. So, uh, in the first period, Cody Glass scored. Um, me and John both missed the first period. <laughs> <laughs> Um, mostly because we were in debates of even showing up today. Um, mostly because yours truly is not feeling good. Not a, I'm not like sick, sick, but just not feeling good physically and mentally. So there's a little heads up there, but this is not helping. Cody Glass gets his first of the season with an assist from Gremlin, his fourth, and McDonough, his third. The second, uh, Gabriel Velarde scores his fourth with an assist from Kaliev and Dursey, uh Kaliev second, Dersey's third. That was on the power play. So Forsberg scores then with his second of the season with an assist from Gradlin, his fifth, and Duchesne, his second. Tanner Janot then scores his first with an assist from Colton Sissons at the end of the third. Or at the end of the second, at the end of the third, at, to, at the halfway of the third, the Preds couldn't get out of their own way. And Matthew Roy scores his second with an assist from former Predator Admiral Prospect Brendan Lemieux. Um, Matt Roy scores again with an assist from Velarde, his third, and Byfield, his third, Roy's third. OT, no goals. Bill Forsberg stopped. Fiala stopped. Duchesne stopped. Velarde stopped. Du R Yossi stopped. Um, they lose in a shootout. Yes, they get a point. I always say points are important. Um, not winning since the month of September? If I remember that correctly. No, I stand corrected. Yeah, yeah. Not winning since they played the Sharks on the 3rd and 4th of October. So we haven't won in two weeks. Um, the, In that they had uh, Cal Peterson stop at 29 of 32 with a point nine zero nine zero six save percentage. <coughs> well, Nashville had UC Saros in net again with 32 saves with 35 shots on net with a .914 save percentage. Scratches for LA are Alex Edler, Jared Do uh, Anderson Dolan, and Jacob Bovara. Um, Edler was injured during pregame skate, took a puck to the face. Uh, that is why he did not play for LA. Kiefer Sherwood, Michael McCarron, Mark Barveski not playing. Uh, Boro not playing surprises me after this team's been kind of on a long road trip. You want to play your most physical player, get, to get under their skin a little bit, and get them to make dumb calls. And they put in Lazan, who got us in the penalty box, I think, twice. Let's see, Tanner Janot. Jeremy Lazan, Jeremy Lazan. Uh, Lazan had a cross checking penalty on Kevin Fiala and a. Tripping on uh, Gabriel Velarde, which two minutes later, Matt Shane had a tripping on Gabriel Velarde. Um, 
Three questions, because as it sits, Um, Dante, uh, Roman Yossi's draft king stock since being teamed with Dante Fabro has dropped by 20 percent. So there's that. Uh, Preds line changes versus the like oh. yeah. So Preds have had four lineup changes since the beginning of the season. Yeah, two of them on the same line, which is that second line, right? Um, after today, the Preds sit in second place with five games played with five points. I mean, um, we already have a minus four in our differential. We're one, one, and one at home, which we've yet to win technically at home in North America. Um... With Colorado and St. Louis and Chicago and Arizona all having less games played, they could all pass us at some point this season. We've yeah. already played two more games than anybody in our division. That's tops. And then we've already played four more games than St. Louis. St. Louis could bump us to fourth within the next month. Um, and then at some point, Winnipeg will come in, um, and Minnesota will revive themselves somehow. I'm not 100% sure on that, um, given that there's a lot going on there. But, um, you know, Preds fans, uh, the Kings still haven't won a game. Uh, Vancouver still hasn't won a game. Minnesota still hasn't won a game. Tampa Bay's one and three. Um, I mean, the only thing I could sit here and look at and say is, um, y'all might want to wake up soon because it's going to be a weird season and get ready to have one. Because at this point, um, it's going to look like a tough year for the NHL statistically. Um, anybody can beat anybody on any given night. We're aware, we're fully aware of this, but the they had this game up by two in the third. All right. Um, there's nothing worse than. Um, you know, there's, there's worse than what we have right now. Um, just looking at the, the Nashville fan base on Facebook, let's take some posts here. <laughs> mm. All right, here we go. Uh, this was three days ago. I think I might start... I, I think I may just start drinking. Might make some of our passes look better. Um, trade Soros, trade Forsberg. Uh, some fans are just speechless, which I I which is where I'm pretty am, which am. 
Um, how do you leave a player all alone in front of Soros? Um, I'm so done with Hines. It's unreal. He got brought back. Hines, Hines, Hines. Oh. Oh. So yeah, there's there's a lot. Um oh. Um uh one says, so are we taking for Bedard? Um so yeah, there's a, there's quite a few people who are Um, I just think that there's so much that's not right right now. Yeah. For the Preds. Um, is this a kind of like death note for them? No. It's still early in the year. You're two, right. two, and one. You're right at 500. You're a minus four in your differential. Clean up your defense. Play hockey how you know how to play. Or... There becomes the question of how much longer does John Hines have a head coaching gig? How long will Poyle put up with it? Because Poyle, as much as everybody complained, put the best team on the ice that Hines has ever had. And we're playing like utter garbage. He's putting players with no chemistry with each other with each other, switching the lines almost on a game-to-game -game basis. Uh, last game the, before this, McCarron was in and, and, and Glass was out. And Sherwood was in and Sherwood's out. And now Sherwood's out and now Sanford's in. And, uh, how are you going to expect to get going uh, when you get going and the top guy on your second line was playing very well, and all you did is basically just say, here, we'll give the fan, give you what you want. You want, so here's the thing. We're going to call up Tomasino and send down Forsberg and let him get claimed on waivers. <laughs> because that would make sense, given how people's perspective of this team looks um trade a guy who has a no trade clause it is midnight here by the way folks so happy tuesday me and john have to do in yet another podcast tomorrow the admirals take on the grand rapids griffins um who are the minor league uh affiliate to the detroit red wings um Well, if we're doing this again. <laughs> All right. Uh, so just a little quick breakdown of that. Uh, last season, the Admirals were 7-5 and five against them. In the last five seasons, the Admirals are 15, 13, 0, and 2 against them. 
Um, on the uh, some familiar faces on that Grand Rapids roster is one is Mr. Matt Luff, who already has two goals. Um, and Austin Zarnick, who has three goals, two assists. Uh, Simon Edmondson has also one goal, three assists. Um, so this team's pretty good. Uh, they, Grand Rapids, is coming off of an eight to five win against San Diego, which in that game, uh, It looks like it's a pretty good roster, but we'll see what happens there. Joel Lesprantz is over there. Um, Tyler Spees is over there. Um, their starting goaltender is Victor Brodstrom. Uh, so we'll see what happens in the next coming couple days. They just got sent someone named Seth Barton. That'll be happening today. So um, it's an early transaction that is literally just came across. Um, Uh, so that looks like to be the just of all we have for you guys today. The Preds fall in a shootout, now falling to 2-2-1, two, two, and one, or 2-2-0-1. Two, two, oh, um, like I said, I don't know how to feel, but this team needs to have a severe wake-up call if it goes into by Thanksgiving, if they're still playing like this, and we don't win... I'd say three more games by Thanksgiving. I I'd say pull the plug on on Hines there. Yeah. Because you want to dip before it gets to where you can't get out of it. Right. If you want to be competitive. Now, if you don't want to be competitive, you can keep him there. But if this team don't pick it up and start putting it down, this is not it. The and the shelf life for Hines's NHL career is not a good one. This, matter of fact, is the best team that Hines has ever had put in front of him because the Hines ended up being the head coach of the New Jersey Devils the year that Ilya Kovalchuk left and put the Devils in a hard place. He ended up pulling them into a playoff game the next two years just tanking. So... We've had two good seasons with him so far. Well, okay, I could say two good seasons. Two seasons where we had a first round playoff exit. But um the real question is, like I said, how long when when do you pull it? You know? Mm hmm So uh Um, so there's that as well. Um, the Preds are back on Thursday, I believe. Let's take a look here. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Yes, they play at Columbus on Thursday. Um, that game's at 7 o'clock. They're also back on Saturday. That game's at 7 o'clock. Actually, the game on Thursday's at 6. Wait, 7, 6, 7. I don't know where it is, what time it's going to be. I don't know if Columbus is Central or... Eastern. I don't remember. Because they're in that wonky state of Ohio where one side's one way and the other side's the other way. 
Um, but yeah, um, this is just one of those shows where I'm just going to give my flat out opinion. So here's the end of it. Put Carrier back with Yossi. Put Sherwood back on the line with, um, uh, Nino Niederreiter and, and Johansson. Put, Colvinid with Smith and Gla uh, Glass. And call it a wrap. If you're not going to do those things, at least try the Ekholm Yossi line combo and put Fabro with McDonough. Yeah. Do, if you're going to change up stuff, at least try something you haven't. Right. So I I really do think that that's kind of the situation. Um, thank you guys for watching. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. I will see y'all later.